Number 177, Ace Fire Underwriters Insurance Company versus Special Funds Conservation Committee. Council? Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court. I am Lisa Levine and I represent the appellant, Ace Fire Underwriters Insurance Company. May I please have two minutes for rebuttal? You may. Thank you very much. On behalf of the appellant, we respectfully submit that the first department incorrectly held that a workers' compensation carrier can seek, can seek a consent order from the workers' compensation I couldn't board. figure out how you got into Supreme Court. Can you tell me how you did that? Because you weren't, you know, you had the plenary action, and if you were, if you had stayed there, I could see where this could get, get taken care of. But is it a DJ? Is it a is it a mandamus? Is it a? I, I just didn't know what form. There's no summons and complaint. There's no. No, Your Honor. I filed. I filed a petition. This was a, an issue of first impression. But a petition, a petition. I mean, I can't file a petition in Supreme Court. They'd say, "What are you doing?" In it, what we did was follow the um, mandate in Workers' Compensation Law Section 29.5, which permits. But that's an over injured, in town. Right. But that, it, with all due respect, that permits an injured worker to seek a consent order in the trial court. With in a the third context party. of his of his lawsuit. So when Carlos, I forget his, his last name has escaped me at the moment, is trying to get his case settled, as as we all know, he's he's got the workers' compensation lien and he's got to get that s satisfied. So so he either agrees, you know, and there's a settlement and and, uh, and a holiday and all of that, or you don't, in which case then you've got to you, you've got to litigate it. But all of that's comp. You, you're, the special fund is only comp. They, they, they're like a fish out of water when they're not, when they're not in comp. And, and I think the two of you now are agreeing that you're in Supreme Court, and I don't even know how that happens. Well, even though, um, even though the special funds only is liable for reimbursement of certain benefits that are paid to the carrier under 15-8, there is no remedy for a workers' compensation carrier to seek reimbursement if it fails to obtain consent. Now, what's these, the basis of the consent requirement? What is the basis of the consent requirement is in Section 29.5, and that the, the Catapano Court specifically said the third department held in Catapano versus Jow that where 15-8 liability has been found pursuant to workers' compensation uh, pursuant to workers' compensation law section 29-5, the carrier must seek prior consent from okay, the what, fund. What was Catapano based on? I mean, where did they? I guess I just don't see it in the statute at all. But everybody, everybody, including uh, yes. both sides here, seem to uh, agree that 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 is a requirement. Is that because the third department said so? Is, the, is it as simple as that, or? I believe the third department did base its reasoning on prior workers' compensation board decisions, such as Brigada Farmland. If I have a if I have a personal injury case and I settle it without the consent of the carrier, without without the Correct. You would be in that you you would be complaining in the context of the of the personal injury lawsuit. You'd be going in and saying, you know, judge, they, they settled this case for half a million dollars and we've got a lien of three hundred and thirty thousand dollars and they didn't talk to us and we're entitled to that money. But it would be in the context of the lawsuit. You're outside of that and you're outside of workers' comp. And and I don't know I mean comp knows comp. They they know uh, when this when the special fund kicks in. They know, you know, what it has to pay. You've started an action in the Supreme Court outside of the plenary action, so somebody's got to take somebody's word that there was indeed a settlement and that it was for half a million dollars, because that's not part of this case. And then they got to take somebody's word that it belongs in Supreme Court as opposed to workers' comp where everybody was. I understand. In every scenario, when there is a, an action pursuant to 29.5 by an injured worker, it occurs because a third party action has already been settled and it is out of the court. Now you bring up, you have to bring a plenary action in the Supreme Court, in the trial court where the third party action was pending in order to seek a consent order, in order, in order to continue your workers' compensation. But, well, benefits. you're saying that only if you fail in what you're supposed to do, you're Correct. supposed to get consent before the resolution of the case. Correct, Your Honor. And you didn't do that. Correct. So now you say, well, because we didn't do that, we have a right to be in an action in a different court under a different index number, and everybody's got to take our, and, and apparently they're willing to, but our word for it that there was a case, that it was settled, that there was a lien, that the lien was more than 
the, the five years, more than the, 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 and therefore the special fund had to, has a, a reimbursement, and we're entitled to make them consent because of that. We believe that based on a fair and reasonable interpretation of workers' compensation law 29.5, that the carrier should be able to seek the same judicial remedy. There's an analogy. We're arguing that there is an analogy. The Workers' Compensation Board cannot issue a consent order. If well, doesn't consent imply it's, it's voluntary? I mean, I, I don't consent to th something that somebody tells me I have to do. I mean, I, I either consent or that somebody goes and gets an order and makes me. Correct. All right, so you're not looking for a consent. You're looking for an order making them pay you something based upon the workers' compensation law. And you're doing it in Supreme Court, not within the context of the plenary action, but because you started a new action over here. Correct. Okay. And again, the analogy would be the, the mechanisms that are in Section 29.5, the benefits to a claimant are directed by the Workers' Compensation Board. However, if the claimant does not seek prior consent, those benefits can be terminated by the Workers' Compensation Carrier. And in order to resume those payments, the claimant has to go to the trial court in order to seek an order of consent. You're just seeking a parallel construction of this statute, Yes, correct? correct. Is that basically your argument, that if, 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 if you're saying that the claimant has to get consent of the carrier, and you're saying that the carrier has to get consent of special funds, if you allow the claimant to go to a court and seek nunc pro tunc order, then you have to allow us to do that. Yes, Your Honor. Is that, that your argument? That basically? is exactly our argument. And since the, the third department in Catapano versus Jow um, has stated that the workers' compensation carrier must seek prior consent or lose its right to reimbursement, and leave to appeal was denied here, uh, this leaves the carrier without a remedy. Section 29.5 is an yes. Well, you're without a remedy because you didn't do, I would say you didn't do your job, but I mean, you should have gotten this consent at the time that the settlement was going. Yes, Your Honor. But so once, you, once that happens, I mean, why does everything else have to change? I mean, the intent you're out of luck. The intent of the statute is equitable. Um, it is to prevent double recovery and also the intent of 15.8 which um, directs, um, which, which permits reimbursement from the special fund um, was enacted in part to remove some of the obstacles to carrier reimbursement where there is this second injury. So these statutes are remedial. Well, was and that to incentivize? Excuse me. Was I'm that sorry. to incentivize coverage or I'm am sorry. I what, what, is there some other goal? Was there some incentivizing goal as far of as the I statute? Uh, terms to ensure, right, the, I understand the point about reducing the burden on you. Is there something to incentivize you? To incentivize the carrier? Yes. To comply, I'm sorry, I'm not Yes, to comply. To comply. To ensure that you get Obtaining this reimbursement. Money. Obtaining reimbursement. Right. Obtaining reimbursement. Mm -hmm. That's the incentive. So the carrier is left without a remedy. And there are cases when the failure to obtain consent is in, inadvertent and many cases where there's no prejudice to the fund. So to deny the carrier a remedy would be inequitable and not in, in fair reading and a logical reading of the But it's statute. not automatic, right? It's still for the court to decide. What, what, what would you have to establish? To we would court? have to establish under 15.8 the entitlement to reimbursement, that there is a prior existing injury and a second injury that's a workers' compensation injury. And after um, it, ha it has to be a material and greater injury, and after 260 weeks, the carrier would be entitled to reimbursement. The Workers' Compensation Board would find that um, the carrier is entitled to that reimbursement. Do you have to establish why you didn't seek consent? Would we, uh, we would have to establish why we did not seek consent. That is set forth in 29.5. There are certain steps. Of the workers' compensation law. Of the workers' compensation law that apply to the claimant and that we do not um, argue should apply to a carrier in making a motion in the trial court. So, so it's possible that the court might not grant this. Absolutely. The, the granting of such motion is left to the sound discretion of the trial court. So you're already incentivized <coughs> to try and get the, the consent up front because you risk the judge not agreeing with you. Correct. Particularly well, if there's just a delay. Clear. Catapano, the, the claimant, was, <coughs> with, I mean, the, the, the injured worker, that was his case. I mean, he, he, was the, he was in the case. 
In your case, that one's done. I mean, I, I just picture if I was a Supreme Court judge and you came to me with this and said, this is a workers' compensation case. There was a settlement. Uh, we were supposed to get consent. We didn't. Uh, they now refuse to give consent. We want you to order them to give consent because, and then you'd have to go through that whole litany of the, of the uh, 160 weeks or whatever, whatever it is, uh, et cetera. And I don't understand why me as a, as a Supreme Court or any judge would say, okay, I don't know anything about the plenary action. I know little or nothing about workers' comp, but I'm going to accept your representations on all of this. I mean, why, why wouldn't it have been in either one of the other places as opposed to a plenary action attached to nothing? Well, what, in Catapano and in many other 29-5 um, motions that I have appeared on, the underlying third-party action oftentimes has been settled or disposed of in one way or another quite a long time ago, and for whatever reason, the claimant then comes back before the Workers' Compensation Board and says, where are my benefits? I'm entitled to benefits. They did not seek consent to settlement, and the carrier stopped paying benefits. In, In that comp, at the comp board. At the comp board, but then that claimant however many months or years later, and in oftentimes it is years later because there is an established delay, will go to the Supreme Court and certainly not the same justice. No, I see that. I see the claimant doing it. Correct. The claimant's not here. Claimant is not in this case. So, claimant was in this case. But he's not anymore. So I, uh, do you see my, my point? In other words, if, if, if okay. Thank you, counsel. Counsel? Good afternoon. I'm Jill Singer for the Special Funds Conservation Committee. And I'm sure you don't hear this very often, but I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with uh, the appellant that, and I but mean, it's know, undisputed. Given the fact that you agree, it, it, it goes back to Judge Pickett's point. Shouldn't we be hearing from the Workers' Comp Board? You're a not-for-profit, right? Or you, you're, right. The, you're the agent for a not-for-profit, right? Exactly. Why wouldn't we be hearing from the Workers' Comp Board in this context? Because uh, the, the uh, carrier never pursued this under Section 23 of the Workers' Compensation Law, which would have been the, um, would have went to the board panel, and then it would go to the third department, and then, you know, the exclusive jurisdiction over uh, workers' comp cases are, are with the third department, in which case the board would be a party to that action, but this is not the avenue that that's the normal way, right? Right. If it's so, a, if it if come up a, that way, then the workers' comp board would be here right now, arguing their point of view and what policy they represent. But without them here, yes. you two both agree on what result we should come to. Yes. And that would be a d detriment theoretically to them, even though they aren't here. But hasn't the board said that they have no authority to grant a non pro tonk order? That there are. Haven't they said yes. that it needs to go through the court? There are. I mean, there's case law that the board does not have the authority to issue consent. That's, there's, you know, not just board decisions. There, so there so could, could the carrier go to the board and seek consent and have it th get to the appellate division that way? That, that's my question. Is, is, there a, is there a way to do that? They didn't do that, and I, I don't, so I, I can't really answer what would have happened has if they had done that, but I know that Has anybody done are, that in your, I mean, you, you're counsel for, for the special funds. I know you've been counsel for the special funds for a while. Has anybody done that before? I've never seen anyone try to get consent from the board, but I have seen the board in, in decisions say, hey, we're not, we don't have the authority to give consent. And that's probably the reason that the appellant didn't take that route, and they went immediately to um, Supreme Court and filed their. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Petition. How did how did how did the board it, how did that come up in those decisions you were aware of in front of the board? Because someone went to the board? Um, no, no. I think it was just uh, dicta in the decision itself, where they they just said no. Oh, in, in similar cases where the carrier did not seek the consent of the special funds, there have been findings, which is what led to Catapano, findings where the board said, okay, well, you waived your right to reimburse me. You didn't get the consent of the special funds. And in some of those, those decisions, just in the dicta, it was implied that, that the carrier would need to go to why do you Why do they need your consent at all? Um, because we're a leaner. We, we reimburse because them Because you're the a leaner benefits. on what? We reimburse. For benefits paid prior, any benefits, well, we reimburse the carrier after a certain number of weeks. After, after 60 months, well, right? Uh, 260 weeks right. or, yeah. well, it depends on I the mean. case. 
right so then that money is essentially our money we're reimbursing them at you know so but, but isn't it within the context of the of the plenary lawsuit in other words the injured party here settled it for half a million dollars there was a compromise in which the the uh, the carrier got roughly a hundred and some thousand there I assume there was a waiver of of, uh, uh, of future payments you know the holiday as they always talk correct you should have been involved in that should you not that's exactly the point they didn't they should have gotten us involved because we are re, you know we are obligated to reimburse them but they didn't get us involved and that's the whole that, but that's in problem. the context of the plenary lawsuit that's why I don't understand why you'd be over here <laughs> where um, I mean if, suppose I'm the judge and I say you know what I think I think not only are they right I think you should pay the first five years I think you should be paid from the beginning that would be harmful to the as judge phase pointing out to perhaps the workers compensation board who's not a party uh, and would set a precedent that maybe nobody likes because it has absolutely nothing to do with comp uh, but I think it's equitable and fair and I'm gonna do it and 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 I don't even know what happened to the to the injured party so I'm wondering why everybody who ought to be interested in this case is not here and the two of you are agreeing yeah we can go to Supreme Court and and, uh, and we can order you I don't know how you know to pay them and I don't I don't think that's a consent um, like Miss Levine said she's making an argument that's a parallel it's a parallel to the the basically the statute that's already in place 29.5 allows a claimant to go retroactively to the court to get judicial consent because he's hurt or she's hurt she's she's got an effect on this because after the after the expiration and you're not there right uh, I think she, her argument is well she's gonna be the carrier is gonna be hurt because their reimbursement's going to be cut off only if they if, don't get the yeah, consent. yeah because if the claimant wants to bring you know it gets to the end and then uh, is looking for you and you're not there ace is gonna have to pick it up but that's the claimant and the claimant's not going to care because one of you are going to pay because that's you know that's that's pretty right. Clear. The claimant has no interest in this. They've they're getting their workers' compensation benefits. The way, you know, assuming the credits um, more than elapsed by now. I mean, they're they're getting their workers' compensation benefits. This particular action is about the carrier and the special funds and the reimbursement, which is in jeopardy. It's it's under Catapano. They waived the reimbursement because they didn't come to us when they should have. For consent, and you if both agree. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go you, ahead. Bo you both agree that um, your consent is required. Correct. Do we have to decide that in order to do what you both want us to do to reverse this case and send it back? I don't think that's disputed. I think it's it's the Catapano. It's it's I think clear. I don't think. But what it has if to be a new what if Catapano would just really not before us was wrongly decided? Do we have to <laughs> we have to follow it? Um, I think it, it's there's nothing I mean the the law under Catapano is if the carrier doesn't get consent which they concede they didn't then they then they are out for the reimbursement so I just think it's a matter of fact that they didn't get the consent so they're out the reimbursement so could it ultimately affect the claimant if uh, if we said uh, that there, there's no remedy for this failure to get consent of special funds would um, I mean would it be realistic to think that the carriers might then raise their rates and and that somehow that there ultimately would be some fallout no I don't think so I actually think they it's quite the opposite they would make sure that they got our consent <laughs> <laughs> if, if that was in fact the finding so I don't see that happening I don't see any, any negative consequence for the claimant. I guess it's not in front of us, but why would you? Why do you? Why would you not consent under the circumstances of this case? Well, they didn't ask. <laughs> they didn't ask for us to consent. That aside, they came, you know, several months later, and I mean, we have the Catapano case, which says, "Hey, you don't have to reimburse them. If they didn't get your consent." So, so as we, a represent, you know, as the as an attorney for the special funds, why would I then go and say, "Okay, we're just gonna mm -hmm. we're just gonna reimburse you anyway"? When I have a case that says I don't have to. So it wouldn't bother you if we ordered you to to assume the the the, the duties that you normally undertake, even though they didn't get your consent. Um, I think they need to go through the motion. I mean, they would need to go through the hoops, I should say, of, of obtaining that consent retroactively, just like a claimant who didn't get the consent of the carrier. It's not as simple as just saying, okay, I'll give consent. I mean, there's... That's not automatic, right? The judge might deny well, right, it? Right, because under Section 29.5, there's a whole, like, 
a whole series of, of steps that they need to show. They like file a petition and, and a petition and, where, and to get the uh, peti the the non pro tonk order, the judicial consent, the petition under Section 29.5 gets gotcha. filed with the, and this again relates to claimants versus um, carriers, not necessarily like there's nothing like we said out there in this to deal with this particular situation but under section 29.5 it is a very there's a very well structured you framework for yeah. what for what a claimant has to do what they need to produce in order for a judge to be able to make a um an intelligent decision whether it but that's the claimant right that's the claimant like and that's what it, their it, argument is that should apply here also in comp. correct that's the claimant in comp going to the Supreme Court looking for retroactive consent because for whatever reason they didn't get consent initially. And that's a remedy that's set forth in Section 29.5 allowing claimants who for whatever reason didn't get the consent or maybe the carrier just withheld is, consent. Is your position they have to satisfy more than these requirements no. that are applied to the claimant? No. I, I mean, they're actually pretty stringent. They're, they're, they're pretty decent requirements. I, I, we're just agreeing that they should have that remedy and that they so, should meet those requirements. So you're protecting the integrity of the fund and the integrity of the process, <coughs> the way Correct. you see this case. Correct. Thank you, Council. Thank you so much. Council, Thank did you, you consider going to the board? We cannot go to the board because the board does not issue an order of consent. Therefore, there is nothing to appeal to a board panel or a full board under Section 23. <coughs> and therefore, there will be no order of the board, a full board, to go up to the third department. Therefore, uh, therefore, the carrier has absolutely no remedy. In the Empire State case, which was determined by the second department, the carrier failed to get consent. And that was, I believe, right after the Catapano decision came down. So that was a particularly, you know, outstanding, you know, issue because it was, the rule was not in place. It was an inadvertent, um, uh, you know, a situation where the carrier did not obtain prior consent. And, and as Ms. Singer pointed out, the fund under Candapano can just withhold consent because it wants to. And that does not you know, stand to reason. That's not in keeping with no, no, the No, it's, it's that you didn't comply, right? So they're, they're, it's not withholding consent. It's that they're, they're not going to pay you because you failed to comply with the requirements that Correct. were imposed upon you. You're arguing that there's a safety net for this. What I'm saying, Your Honor, is that there are occasions when there is an inadvertent failure by the carrier to seek that consent at the time that the third party action Is that a settles. requirement, by the way? I'm, I'm sorry. In, in, in terms of the uh, uh, statute for purposes, what, what she's already set out, these are stringent requirements. Is that one of the requirements that it's inadvertent? Uh, well, under under 29.5, you have to prove reasonableness, no delay, no prejudice to the carrier, um, and among among other things. But those are two of the big factors. And again, it's up to the discretion of the trial court. You know, there have been cases when the delay has been egregious or when a settlement is not reasonable and where the fault is totally due to... But if the to settlement's not reasonable, that's in the context of the plenary action, right? Correct, Your Honor. Does, I, 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 you can see where I'm hung up on this. I, I, it just seems to me that the claimant who under 29 can, can make this petition uh, is not in this lawsuit. And, and, and uh, whether or not the, the settlement was a good one or not or whether, you know, et, et cetera, can't be in front of this court because you, you, it seems to me what you should have done is, is move within the context of, of, I forget his last name, the, the lawsuit that was brought on the, on the plenary action and, and, and then said, you know, this, we need the consent of this. Twenty, a motion for 29.5, when a, when a lawsuit is, is still live, right. okay, a claimant can request consent um, and can even do that, you know, in the courtroom. Once the case is settled, then the, the claimant would be in, in the same position as we're arguing the carrier is in now because that third party action is settled. And what we're talking about here are the residual rights that um, a claimant would then have to um, obtain continuing workers' compensation benefits. Sometimes when a claimant has not um, 
sought consent. The carrier has not um, been able to um, recoup its lien. So that is an equitable consideration also, just like here, in the, the context, fund has its lien. In, in the context of workers' compensation benefits, reaction. reimbursement thereof, a third-party action arising from- Well, there's from, no third-party action. I mean- it, it, There was, arising from well, the same injuries. It could be in any given case a third-party, but it's not always true. And, and I mean, in a simple auto accident case, there can be a comp lien, uh, uh, and, and it's a straight up negligence case and the state and, and, the, and the special fund can kick in because of the, of the type of injury. You wouldn't have any third party action. They would need your consent and if you've got, if you're worried about the tail of the special fund, you need their consent to get your consent to get the thing settled, all of which affects the plaintiff. This consent issue you're only, really only concerns when there is a third party action that arose out of the same injuries as the workers' compensation claim. So it is that limited circumstance. And in an automobile, you know, accident case, obviously, the, the, there is uh, the no-fault um, consideration. Thank well. you, counsel. Thank you very much.